Now, the remit of the Civic Forum, just to remind everybody, it did not have the power to make decisions, um, but existed to enable society to, to have a more participative role in decision making by reacting to legislative business that is before the Assembly. So much about what, what trade unions and NGOs actually do today. So we could, we could scrutinise legislation, we could commission research and we could produce reports. And I want to say this very clearly, contrary to, contrary to everything that you will hear um, from our political parties there, or some of our political parties, and indeed some academics and some people within civil society, we did a huge amount of work in the two years that we existed. Assisted very capably with um, some members from the trade union sector in developing a regional anti-poverty strategy. And we have a fantastic report that sits on a shelf somewhere. And if you really hope and poke around Google, you'll, you'll, also, fi you'll, you'll also find it um, there. Uh, for me, I think it's very clear that political structures at the time were very weak. And I personally would not want to see a civic forum in existence without our political structures. The, 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 the actual need for the civic forum is raised in debt is there to support um, and to give information to, to uh, an assembly. It's not there to usurp um, their position. So it's, it's there as a compliment to, to be complimentary. And then there's part of the Northern Ireland Assembly, and I re really regret to say I tried. I printed out the discussion that happened on Monday, um, the the SDLP motion that went, and I printed it out, and I could see I, I skimmed it, and I could see words like lap dogs and talking shop and want to be politicians. I saw all that in it, and then I left it in the office, and I have got the keys to go back in together. So I haven't I haven't read it. I was going to just share some of the words just to show you that very very little has changed, but it's, it it has moved on for politicians and even. Academics. I heard from today was that um, I've just been to the DU party DUP party conference this morning, and I heard the word parasites used. So things haven't necessarily changed. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that gives you some kind of an overview. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a supporter of the re-establishment of the Civic Forum. And I believe that uh, Sinn Féin and the DUP will move soon to do so. My concern would be that this time around, I believe that they, they will try very hard to fill it with their own supporters, with lackeys, and with a fair sprinkling of complete lunatics, like the way Fraser. Um, <laughs> as a taxpayer, I don't want to be paying for this. I believe that there's an opportunity for civic society and community voluntary sector to move first and set up the, the, uh, the new civic forum themselves, even if that means initially financing it themselves. I also believe that our party is well placed, not only to lead the calls for that to happen, but to lead the development of it, if and when it does. Thanks. Hello, Joy Griggs. Um, <coughs> one of the uh, pieces of research in the civic forum did was on the equivalent monies that was been allocated in Northern Ireland for children's centres, and it was the only piece of research that showed that, and at that stage said that we were to have 70 of these in Northern Ireland, not one of which materialised, um, and the monies went elsewhere. So I think there is a good reason for something to scrutinise, as you said before. We do need to scrutinise, especially when we don't have an opposition. And it was interesting that actually the social investment fund, which really really pounds that was vaunted, you know, so much by the parties, especially main parties coming up to the election, um, it had to be a, a journalistic organisation that actually brought that for to the fore a few weeks ago, um, of of uh, people's consciousness again and how that had been let drift. So I do think there's a a, a role in civic society in terms of holding our government to account in some way, especially without this opposition. Thank you very much, John. Um, just like the ad, which I said there, that, uh, the real need for citizenship and the building of citizenship, I think, you know, the, will not be complete until we have a civil forum. Because I think that both of them are so intertwined, and you'll, you'll only get citizens who are com committed to the country that they live in, and the place that they live in, you know, about where it is, um, and, and, and been involved and back in the civil forum uh, that would hold the government to account for their civil liberties is quite an important thing to be involved in. But I think that the civic forum does present an opportunity for people to engage in the debate, and more importantly than just debate, but to bring forward policies and strategies for the building of the new society that we all want. 
Uh, and I think this should be something of prime importance uh, for this party. Uh, Q and Joe and uh, Joy are absolutely correct in what to say. Uh, someone does need to hold the Assembly to account, and it shouldn't be Stephen Nolan, because the, the sort of stuff that goes on there is just an argument for the sake of an argument, instead of any serious, rational analysis and assessment uh, or critique of, of, of what is actually happening up there at the Assembly. And maybe there's a challenge for the Workers' Party about this as well. Maybe we're too cocooned, because the existence of the Civic Forum and all of the other contributions that we've heard here today from people like Cadden and Ratty and, and, and everyone else demonstrates that there are progressive organisations out there, other than the Workers' Party, uh, who are engaged in all this type of work. And surely the challenge for us should maybe to get out of our silos and become part of the big debate that is undoubtedly happening out there. Content uh, is the only word you can use to describe the, um, the political parties and the media that have for a uh, grassroots democratic organisation that the Civic Forum would represent. And for me, it's very important because it is a, a grassroots um, democratic body that not only can hold the government to account, um, but also, as the Speaker said, to guide, to research, to commission reports on, to raise awareness and educate the, the, the public, but also as a forum for civic alliances. Um, as I say, there are, the Workers' Party are not just the only party. There are a lot of good bodies out there and voluntary and the public sector and the unions. It would be an opportunity for them to come together I would say that that would create a lot of anxiety and storm on where you have such a, a, a democratic body um, to, to put this, the microscope uh, or the magnifying glass over some of their policies and to represent the interests of the, the community at large. The full prom promise of the Good Friday Agreement has yet to be delivered. One of the main reasons is that this society has not be moved beyond the narrow and dangerous confines of unionism and nationalism. If we are serious about the future, then we must start by taking measures to restructure our political institutions. Is it really any wonder that we still have sectarian confrontations over parades and flags when the assembly itself is based on sectarianism and difference? Changing the way the assembly works is one of the keys to changing the situation on the streets. The first steps in changing the assembly should be to do away with the need for MLAs to declare themselves as either unionist or nationalist. There must also be an end to the DeHunt method of forming the executive, and there should be no more cross-community or parallel voting deals. Changing the way the assembly works, how it appoints executive and how it reaches decisions is now an urgent priority. Integrated society. The Workers' Party believes in one community in Northern Ireland, not two. If we are to work seriously towards building an integrated society, then we have to confront the idea of separate but equal. There is no room for separate in an equal society. You cannot have separate in an equal society. Those who continue to promote that policy are compounding our problems are widening community division and must be challenged at every opportunity. The challenge for everyone concerned with the type of society we live in and the values that society holds is to work towards maximising the input of civic society. The past. As a society, dealing with the past has proven to be one of our most difficult areas. We cannot assume that the past and all its consequences can be dealt with satisfactorily inside of a limited time frame. This is not the international experience. This is not how it's happened in any other parts of the world. I am delighted that we have, have, that we have had with us this afternoon Peter Heathwood, who will be helping us to address issues of the past and how victims of violence are treated. I very much look forward to hearing what he has to say. I said at the outset that the Workers' Party, this debate is really about the type of society we want to live in and the values it should uphold. That was the message we delivered to the House Commission on parades, protests, flags and the past. We must now continue to deliver that message. Changing the, way society, changing the way the Assembly works is one of the keys to changing the situation on the streets. For as long as the Assembly is run on sectarian lines 
and for as long as no one challenges its possession, and for as long as the rest of the community is frozen out of discussion, nothing is going to change. The alternative for Northern Ireland and its citizens is to keep voting along sectarian lines and suffer the consequences. The Workers' Party can and will break the cycle. 22. My father's cousin, Thomas Heathwood, was aged 17 years of age, lived in Wall Street, which was where Unity Flats are now. He was shot dead by snipers from the UVF. My father was at that funeral as a boy, aged seven. In the 1970s trouble, he dies seeing me shot. Am I going to have to worry that when my children and my grandchildren down the road in 40 or 50 years see similar violence return to our family? And the same story affects a whole lot of families. I'm sure in this room there's other cases can go back. So Northern Ireland repeats its violence. If we don't deal with the issues of the past openly, we are condemned to repeat this reoccurring sore. And it will happen. Again, the main aim of all of this is make sure it never happens again. Thank you, comrades. And the second issue that is at the core of our principles and that differentiates us from virtually every other party, in fact from every other party in Northern Ireland, is our commitment to class politics. And we see politics not in the sense of two opposing religions, not in the sense of some particular uh, business interest group, but we speak only, as John said, for one group of people, the working class. And those positions have run through the politics of the WP from its beginning and they are fundamental to our programme today. In Northern Ireland, the very architecture of government itself is designed to inhibit the development of working class consciousness. They don't want workers to be conscious of their position as workers. They don't want workers to consider and look at issues of poverty, of low pay, of high youth unemployment, of fuel poverty, of racism of homophobia, and of, of the issues of welfare reform, all of which have been discussed by us today. We are, as we describe in our banners, and you can see them here, socialist, secular, and anti-sectarian. There is only one alternative, and that is the anti-sectarian and socialist alternative. And that, I think, comes through from the contributions of the various people here today, that we are on the right path, and that's the path that we propose to follow. Thank you, uh, comrades.